Bartholomew McTaggart. That's like a Benedict Cumberbatch uh, name generator name right there, Bartholomew McTaggart. Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is episode 19 of our Let's Play. If you missed episode 1, as usual, I'll put a link in the top right-hand corner. Highly suggest that episode. It's pretty awesome if you ask me. Uh, what we are doing right now is we are trying to clean up the frontier. Yes, it is winter. It is November 6th. So this is going to be costly in terms of our troops getting uh, frostbite and diseases and desertions, all of that fun jazz. But the plan here is to take Russell uh, and then take Fort Levy and also take, uh, was it Fort Bron Brontanac? I don't know how to pronounce that as usual. I am absolutely terrible with the pronunciations. And we're doing a two-pronged assault here. Hopefully we can uh, clear all of this out quickly. Looks like they are moving some guys up. Um, not realizing that we actually have enough forces. Oh, okay, you interception of merchant ships are <laughs> getting in the way of my battle here. And then, oh, loyalists are alarmed. Faced with the threat of a continental army invasion, British officials in Frontier issue a call for loyalists to join ranks. Man, this is the third time that has happened, which is... Ugh. Okay, where are they? Hopefully it's just down here and we can take care of it. Uh, it should just be Militia, which is quite nice. I would like you to actually move forward, though. That would be that would be fantastic. And then um, let's get this battle going. Okay, we don't have our supplies. Is that a problem? Not really. Not really. Let's take the Battle of Fort Levy right now. I'm, I'm assuming this is one of the Frontier guys. I don't know where else the Frontier guys might be. We also, uh, before I forget, need to do this. So we'll probably do what long campaigns I think might be it. Um, grabbing those guys might be yeah. Let's do long campaigns. You can see we've nearly cleared out a lot of the uh, a lot of the research in in the game, and then let's go back into this battle and let's uh, let's destroy Fort Levy real quick. We don't need those supply wagons for this battle. That's that's fine. So. Let's take the Battle of Fort Levy. As usual, I paused at the very beginning and then gave it a bunch of orders. Um, we are on the opposite side of the fort, so the and we can't go through the gate, which not a big deal on the level 1 fort. Now we are going to be moving our troops out and about. I don't know why they're stopping. And then let's, uh, let's speed things up just a little until we get into contact with the enemy. These frontier maps have a lot of performance issues, but the devs are aware of it. In, I, I will be making a post, I think, on Sunday about the their most recent update, the, the, the or not their most recent update, because there's no update out yet, but their their most recent post about where the game is is going. You know, I don't like that their artillery is right there. And it shows the full map. It talks about the American campaign being... It's going to be released in full, which is fantastic. Or they're, they're testing the full release, I should say, which is absolutely amazing. You love to hear that because the longer we get to test that campaign, the, the better that campaign is going to be. Um, at least that's that's my opinion on that, and I'm sticking to it. Um, the alpha testers do their job, but as far as I understand, the alpha testers mostly test stability issues. Um, so it's great when the masses like us grab the game because we there's there's a lot more of us than there are alpha testers. Okay, you guys are getting a little little frisky over there. Okay, let's start moving you guys out. We just need one guy over here to defend. Let's put Arnold out over there. That would be great. And then continue pushing forward on this flank. Uh, one thing I would love is on these snowy maps for, for where your units go. I, I would love I would love a different color. Because I don't know if you guys notice, the color is almost identical to what you have to the to the snow 
it's really, really difficult to see. Um, yeah, see, like, right there, you can see the outline of where my unit should be. Not the line itself, but the outline box. And I don't know about you guys, but that looks like a slight shade different from what the snow is, and uh, it's really difficult for me to for me to see. We're going to slowly move up this artillery. Uh, it's it's firing grape shot, so it's doing pretty well. We're going to slowly move up these units. And then, hopefully, we can get a nice surround going. Um, these guys are getting a little beat up, I would say. Let's, uh, let's push you guys forward and you guys can, can merge and then keep, keep pushing up. And over here, I need you guys to hit hold, I need you guys to hit hold. Hold gives you more, more cover, gives you 15% cover. Um, it kind of represents the front rank kneeling, which to me that shouldn't give you more cover, but it's, uh, you know, it, I, I would like it to, to be more damage for your units. Uh, the AI also can't hold, if you're ever wondering about that. So it's, it's a little bit interesting, like you have something that the AI can't do, and it's more micro-intensive for you. It's it's a good and bad thing to me. It's it has its its pros and cons. I don't I don't dislike it. Obviously, it, it adds to your ability as the player, but it's definitely something where it's like you kind of need to be doing it all the time, or you're missing out. And I don't know if that's a good good mechanic. You never know this sort of stuff. All right. So we need to have you guys stop firing, we need you guys to charge in, we need you guys to charge them, and then we should have... Oh, we stopped stopped charging the, the artillery. We do have some guys getting away, unfortunately. Hopefully we can grab them, that would be fantastic, and then just speed things up. Um, as long as we stop firing into our own men, that would be great. Would love you guys to stop firing. Why are we not getting this artillery? I yeah 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 yeah. And those guys got away, so that's fine. And they shattered. All right, back to the global map. Oh, we didn't. Uh, there was no negative casualties this battle. Sometimes the game doesn't really know how to handle battles like this, and you get like negative casualties. You. You actually take casualties, just this screen goes a little buggy. But that was the Battle of Fort... something. Alright, moving our forces out. Looks like they all surrendered or died or whatever, so that's great news there. Looks like more militia or, you know, Canadian frontiermen, whatever you want to call these guys. Frontier dudes are, are coming to attack. Um, probably need Arnold to not be where he is. And then, ooh, this this might get a little bit interesting. They they might outnumber us here, but I think our men are better, if I recall. And then we just took that fort. Ooh, that is okay. <laughs> that's that's a few a uh, few more men than I would like, but it's a bunch of militia. So let's take this battle. This is the cheesy part of this game because um, since you don't have armies, which I still really hope they can figure it out somehow. Um, you can box out enemy units, so these 800 plus dudes that are within the yellow box aren't actually within the yellow box, because I don't understand how the yellow box works. So I can force this battle before those guys get there. I find that incredibly cheesy. I don't know, there's a lot of people that like this part of the game, um, but that's just my thoughts on it. I, I think it's very, <laughs> very open to abuse, but... We're going to take the Battle of Russell against all of these useless militia, and we should absolutely tear them apart. Okay, just moving out, uh, I was asked before, like, why don't I take cover in the trees more often, and part of it is because at the very beginning you're just kind of like mad scrambling to get your line in place, and then sometimes it's really hard to figure out like where the good cover is, so I'm, I'm going to try to move my artillery into the trees there. Move some guys over here, and then skirmishers in the trees. If there is an anchor point for me to take take terrain early on, 
I, I will try and do that. The issue, just as I said, it's it's like this mad dash to try and sort the line out before the British engage you. Um, because the British are really aggressive. I would love I would love some tweaks to the AI. Now I say I would love tweaks to the AI. The the devs are constantly working on the AI, so they they are that that is something like every every update talks about tweaks they make to tactical battle AI and global battle AI. So just just keep that in mind that when I say I would love this, um, the devs the devs are working on things like that, and I really really appreciate that the devs do do try and work on stuff like that. Like looks like the British are pushing this flank a little bit harder than the other flanks. Um, I really don't need guys protecting our artillery now I think about it. I might pull these guys back just a little. Actually, I need to make sure everybody's on hold position. And there are a decent amount of British here, and it would be nice if, if we deal as much damage as possible. Can you guys see? Where's the line of sight thing? Yeah, you guys can see. You guys can kind of see. Alright. Should should be good on this flank, and then just waiting for mass British militia to move forward. We'll actually move those guys up too. Um, Mr. Mr. German McGerman von Schleuden. I'll say it the German way. He is moving on up, and then we should have some nice firepower. Can we turn skirmish mode off yet? Is that an option? I would love to. I absolutely hate skirmish mode in their games. It doesn't do what I really want it to do. Okay, they can hold perfect. They're not really holding, but they're kind of holding. So it'll it'll do. In the infamous words of that farmer that owned Babe, that'll do, pig, that'll do. Is it bad to call the British pigs? I don't know. Oh, I should put these guys on hold because it also gives them 15% too. This will probably be a pretty boring battle because it's just a bunch of British militia. Now, I believe British militia is armed with brown vessels, which is like off. Like, ugh, their guys are armed really well and, you know, our militia starts off, well, actually our regulars start off with civilian muskets and have to move up. I think most of our guys now are armed with Virginias, um, or at least uh, we, we have like a mix of brown besses and Virginias for our regulars, and then our militia are a mix of U.S. muskets. Some of the, like, the really crappy ones that are literally there to... Um, appease or oppress the masses and um, mostly to stop loyalty from going absolute crap. Those guys I think have civilian muskets and they only have two companies so it's like 300 dudes. Um, but the, the rest of our guys I believe have US muskets and I think some of our militia might even have Virginias. Um, we, we are getting to that point where we have a lot of stuff so Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to capture a lot of these guys just because of how this... Are they charging in? That's interesting how they're moving like that. Um, just, we don't have cavalry, so I don't know if we really have a great way to, to punish them. I mean, they're just retreating, backing off, retreating, because their, their morale should be pretty bad. We are creating like a what would you call this? A horseshoe? I guess yeah. We're we're sort of creating a horseshoe, kind of funneling them into the center. That is one of my plans in most battles is to create create a way to to really push the Brits. Okay, can we can we move up like there? That would be great. And then if you could move up like there, you hear crashing in the background. That is my crazy cat. <laughs> it's just like tear her ass into the room. Uh, gotta love, gotta love cats. Okay, uh, let's keep you guys moving forward. This should, uh, I mean, we should be doing 
really well still. Let's just make sure that uh, our lines are moving up. I would love to crush these guys, but it definitely feels... No, 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 I told you to move up. Like, do not unlimber until you get to the position that I tell you to. I'm an abusive general, I know, but um, it's for your own good. Well, it's not necessarily. You might take casualties, but it maximizes your experience because you guys... Oh, boy, uh, that's not good. They're getting flanked. That's what you guys care about, right? Experience? <laughs> Use the leaders in the Continental Army. It's like, march up that hill, but we'll die, but you'll gain experience. Okay, this battle is incredibly boring. I, I really apologize for that. I'm really trying to push push the Brits, but they seem to not want any of it, and they're not... Like, I'm not getting the mass, uh, mass victory, mass route on their end. Which is quite, quite obnoxious, so. We're just going to continue trying to push up and... See if we can do some damage. I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive in this battle. Maybe. <laughs> Say that. And just... Nothing is happening. The British just keep going backwards and backwards. This is where a mass route should happen, um, but it's not happening. So I don't know what to I don't know what to say at the moment. I guess I could fast forward, but then as soon as I fast forward, I feel like the enemy is going to. Are these guys? No, they're not routing, routing, which is unfortunate. Can we... Where our condition is probably terrible, isn't it? No, it's not. So we could continue moving forward. Let's just move forward. Okay, sorry for the silence there. I'm just really trying to figure out how exactly I want to go about this battle because the Brits are just... Can we... Can we charge? I know we'll lose a bunch of condition by charging, but can we can we just get these guys okay, friendly fire, perfect. I mean it's not perfect, but that just means they surrendered. Alright, these cannons, I don't know. Stop stop firing because you're going to be causing more harm than good at this point. And then Okay. You guys get out of there. And you guys can move forward, and then you guys move forward. I guess that's kind of... This battle is so weird. Quit retreating! You're gonna keep retreating, just mass route and break. Oh my goodness. Okay, how are you guys? Can you charge there? Can you charge there? Can you charge there? Um, you don't have much condition left, but just charge. And we're just going to do a mass charge. And then see. Ah, uh, Abel Jones! There's an ABL. That's an interesting. Interesting name. Alright, move up. Okay, there's the mass route. Good god, that took forever. Come on, let's, uh, let's get as many captures as we can. Perfect, there's another one. Somebody grab him! Get him! Don't let him run away! No! Alright, let's put it on fast forward a little. Alright, perfect, perfect, perfect. So probably two got away. That's actually a lot better than I thought at the beginning where the British were just kind of running away. Right, cue Benny Hill music in your head and the battle, we're just going to call it over. Okay, we, we, we lost way more than four dudes. This screen is... <laughs> like, we lost way more than four dudes in this battle. I mean, come on. Look, these, unless these guys were shooting themselves, the, these captured, this unit alone killed more than four dudes. All of these units minus Sassery Stap. What a name, Sassery Stap? What is your name, Sassery Stap? Valentine Sauce? <laughs> Bartholomew McTaggart. That's like a Benedict Cumberbatch a name generator name right there, Bartholomew McTaggart. Erasmus Longcroft. These are 
Sassery Swassfield. These names are amazing. And then you got Mark Dyson. Archibald We oh. I thought I thought there was thought there was something in there, but it's Archibald Wheelock. Okay. Yeah, these names are fantastic. This guy's name is so prestigious. He is Gideon Space 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 Baldwin. The uh grandfather of a different Baldwin that became an actor and may or may not have shot somebody. No, he, he did shoot somebody. Alright, back on the battlefield. Trying to capture as many of these guys as possible. Oh, we might have another battle, I just realized. Oh, we need to... Okay, yeah, we're going to have another battle, unfortunately. Um, so our guys might be a little bit tired, but it's just yeah, it's a bunch of crappy militia. So these battles are stupid easy. I I know I, I, I like to give my thoughts a lot. Um, I don't like these frontier reinforcements. They don't add difficulty. I think I talked about this in a different episode, where I feel like games have a really hard time adding difficulty instead of annoyances. And these are just annoyances. This is like playing whack-a-mole. You can see here that this is not posing any challenge whatsoever because these militia are so bad. Um, so I, I don't know what I would do. It's also like the entire population of the frontier came out to fight us, but it's a sandbox game, so it's, it's fine. But let's fight the Battle of Russell 2.0 against Militia 2.0. Right, our forces are deployed a little bit strange. I think this unit is like already routing, which makes sense because I think it was routing on the battlefield. But we have to reposition our forces. Um, we're going to try and take this tree line. And then we are going to try and put our artillery in the trees there. And then over here, we're we're sort of... I don't know what we're doing over here, actually. We are trying our best to figure it out. And uh, there's our general late to the battle as usual. He's just really sleepy. Um... Alright, you guys come around this way. See if we can move you up a little, and then you guys go on hold. We'll pull you guys into the center, and then hopefully these guys can figure out where they're supposed to go, and you guys will go take care of those skirmishers over there. And yeah, this will be this will be interesting. You just walk straight into range of artillery. That's going to be absolutely disgusting for you. Um, are you trying to get into melee? Can our cannons fire, please? Mm, okay, I don't want you firing anymore. All right, you guys charge. That's fine. Um, let's bring bring you over here. We should win that. Um, that being said, they are, they do have brown vests, so who knows? Okay, we are winning that. Perfect. And then over here, have you fired yet? Would be amazing if you could fire. And then, if I if the game would let me draw my my amazing line, that would be fantastic too. And then let's keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. And then over here, I don't know, did those guys, uh, they're not really fleeing off the battlefield. Perfect. That should have been some canister shot, right? No, you're firing round shot. Okay. Nobody knows. Alright, keep on pushing up. Fire at them. And then essentially bring you back over here. We're not doing too well over here, to be honest. There we go. There we go. That's what we needed. Alright, those guys. Perfect. Let's uh, start bringing you around this way. Bring you around this way. Over here. This is where you would love to have some... some cavalry. And those guys are coming back. We'll have to keep an eye out for them. But I think we just crashed their flank, which is perfect. And then keep on attacking and then you guys okay fall back and go attack those guys all right can we no your conditions trap condition is so brutal 
Okay, come on. Move up, move up, move up. Like, with, with all the moving you have to do in the beginning, and then... You, you get, like, half a charge off, and your guys are like, I am really tired. Uh, they turn into the French. No, just kidding. The French are good. But if you've seen that meme old cartoon, you know what I mean by fires the missiles and I am the type. That's a that's a oldie. And it shows off my age. I'm 35. I know. I sound people say I sound a lot younger than I am. Um my voice I I feel like I, I went halfway through puberty with my voice, I guess, and then it was like, nah, you're done maturing your voice. You can have like a slightly higher pitched voice. So I get that a lot where people are like, oh, you sound really young. I also look kind of young too, which is good and bad. It depends if I'm like shaving my beard or not, because my beard is awful. It looks like, I, I usually have a little thing around my face like that, but I forget what that's called. But if I attempt to grow a full beard, I look like I'm homeless. <laughs> it's it's dreadful. And I have I have like tons of gray hairs that sprout in my beard, but I have no gray hairs on my head, and it's I, I look like a mess. So uh, you probably uh, not until I'm like extremely comfortable and lose some weight will I probably ever do recordings with a webcam. I do have a webcam though. But these these battles, Ugh. the British just like avoiding the fighting. It gets really, really tedious. Like the constant, there we go. The constant retreating, going backwards. It's like, ah, oh, come on. Like just fight me. I don't think we're going to catch any of them. And then you're over there. So, you Benny Hill music in your head. I guess, like, I should actually get a 10 second clip. I'm just afraid of copyright strikes. But I think a 10 second clip would be fine of Benny Hill music right at the end. Boom! Making babies! Negative 22 casualties. <laughs> Screen's so funny. Is the date right yet? No, the date's always stuck at 21st of June, 1775, even though it's the 8th of November, 1776. Uh, this screen's a mess. Hopefully they'll fix it one day. Back on the battlefield, so we have Arnold coming from the north and Von Steuben coming from this direction. We should pin them in. Alright, I don't need you guys chasing them like crazy. Oh, we got a surrender! Oh, perfect. Ah, that's, that's amazing. Oh, and they surrender too, even though we stopped chasing them. <laughs> that made no sense. Um, but... Moving down this way, and I do have some militia going to Fort Levy, and I just moved those guys to Fort St. John's because it hates me and has 0% loyalty. Absolutely hates me. Alright, we have Russell. Actually, that's uh, probably not good, to be honest, there. Alright, keep moving. Let's have... Yeah, Morgan's Rifles, you can go to Fort Stanwyck, and then, um, yeah, that'll work. And then we have Fort Frontenac is our final frontier. That's not, let's let the infantry go first. I would love formations. Formations would be amazing. So that, like, our supply wagon doesn't get shot. Because that guy totally was about to shoot shoot our supply wagon. Why do you go backwards? I don't know. Nobody knows. Why is there melee? Okay. Um, well, we'll do this battle. Uh, yeah. Oh, they actually have some real guys here. La Farm. Sounds French. Um, so this will actually... I mean, it's not going to be a battle. <laughs> it's, it's going to be another slaughter. That's like all the frontier has been is just kind of like managing your troops and managing the loyalty and wasting hundreds upon hundreds of men trying. Oh, and their and their forces are outside. Um, I was going to say it's like you're you're wasting hundreds upon hundreds of men 
sitting in places with bad loyalty. Why are... Oh yeah, because they, they moved out. Alright, I'm going to give a bunch of orders and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, hopefully I moved all the guys and combined all the guys I need to do. I don't know. It's, it's always a mess at the beginning. Ay, 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 ay. Um... Early access, people. Early access. Hopefully they can clean up stuff. Very first priority, which it sounds like they have their priorities straight, is, of course, make sure the game works. And that's always a very important priority. And as I said, uh, almost every update or news article that they put out, um, they, they talk about like performance and balance and this and that. So I, I really, really appreciate that. I don't know what the British are doing. Can't see the British. They can probably see me. Um, so let's speed things up a little and hopefully we don't get surprised. Um, oh! Wow! Just immediately lose an officer. Perfect. <laughs> First Lieutenant Jonas, Jonas Payne. Not the, he's not a Jonas brother, but he is, he is a Payne. Which is kind of like being a Jonas brother, right? Is, uh, being a Payne. I don't know. Uh, my, my humor is, is terrible lately. I shouldn't say lately, it's just terrible. Just always, always terrible. Alright, let's continue moving forward. Um, have I mentioned I would really love army formations? Army formations would be so awesome. I would, I would love army formations. Okay, so we're continuing to move up. We are on... We are speeding things up a little. I don't know if it's a good speed or not. Let's continue moving up. Our, I mean, clearly our artillery can't keep up, so it's probably a terrible speed. Um, so somewhere around here is where the artillery should go. You guys should go about here, and then you, and you. And let's just have you move out that flank, and you guys can move out over here, and so on and so forth. I would also love control groups. It'd be crazy if there's control groups and I just didn't know about it. Yeah, no, that didn't work. It thinks that the entire army is control group one when I'm clearly... No, it just... like... Uh, does that work? Control group one? No. Huh. I don't know what that first thing was. That was kind of odd. All right, well we're shooting the shooting the artillery in the rear. Um, I think you guys have heard me say this before. Generally, people require consent for those kind of actions, but we are a non-consensual army. We are the Continental Army of the United States. We don't care about your consent, so we'll shoot you in the rear. You will take it, and you will... Well, you won't like it, but you, you will take it. Okay, so we got their artillery to retreat, which is perfect. Now, our line, on the other hand, this is the worst line I have ever seen. That's not true, I've seen worse. Um, but this is a pretty terrible line. Let's continue the wraparound. You just go all the way around. And then artillery, you might get in the fight. Um, we're not entirely sure. It's not guaranteed for sure. Um, I did tell you guys to hit forward. And then, come on, push forward. There's just enough space for the artillery to kind of... Oh, no. Okay. Won't let me draw the line. So, I'm playing American Civil War. Playing the GMT mod, shout out to Panda Kraut for creating an awesome mod, even though I suck at it, and he probably thinks I hate the mod. Um, it's just maybe not exactly the mod for me, but I love tons of aspects of the mod. Anyways, um, playing the American Civil War game, and I'm like, I can draw perfect lines in that game, and it's an older game. Why can't I draw... Perfect lines in this game! That's all I want to do, is draw perfect lines. Um, I am a very linear person. Well, that's not true. I love a linear combat. That's also not true. No, I, I do love linear combat. I love line battles. I love how beautiful they look. Come on, get that guy. No! 
stop firing cease God, the, like the first shot the cannon takes is friendly fire okay so they just ran straight through guys you know that's that's fine that's fine um what was i saying oh american civil war so i've been playing that a lot and when i draw a line like it's beautiful and they they go into position and it's amazing <laughs> in this game that I, like if i okay for example if i try to have these guys form up right here okay it's going to actually do it because oh there we go so if i like start my click on the guys sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you guys have seen it before negative nine man tons of babies in the frontier they also lost negative one gun could you imagine birthing that out don't ask how it works I think it had something to do with me shooting them in the rear, but I'm not entirely positive there. Alright, on the battlefield, 15,000 gold. I'll take that. Yeah, there we go. There's a bunch of words here. I'm not going to read it because, uh, oh, we won the lotto. Yay, one in one million chance of doing that. Okay, we need to move some really crappy troops up over here. I don't know about Montreal. Um, I don't really care about Quebec. So let's have you go there and you Rommel, Feldmarshal Rommel can go there. And we'll have a good unit there. I've recruited two really crappy units, actually three. Uh, we've, nope, we haven't done anything. I don't know what we've done. Um, we have 66 gold doubloons over there. Going garrison. No, it's reputation, not gold doubloons. Um, so I need crappy units to take Fort Frontenac and Russell. Yeah, I'm butchering that every single time. And then we'll be good to move all of our forces back to New York. Okay, you're supposed to get, um, yes, provide ammunition to them. That's fine. Uh, yeah, uh, we did lose a ship. I tried to intercept uh, their invasion fleet that went up here, and that didn't go well. Mostly because my ships had been destroying the entire British Navy for a very long time, and uh, my ships were battered and bruised, and it didn't necessarily go too well. Okay, so I imagine, yeah, you guys, we can't have this here, so we need to get you guys out of here. Um... And then, who do I want on this front? Well, we could put... So we've got Ward Silver over there. We could put, like, Mr... Uh... Ooh, that was a rough, rough lag spike over there. Um, and then we could put you, like, I don't know. In the frontier. Um, you'll go over here. That's fine. And then you can be over here. Also fine. And we have a supply wagon, don't we? We have two supply wagons. Okay, let's get you down to Fort Montgomery. That'd be great. And then can we get this supply wagon back to say Fort Saratoga that would be fantastic and then I just need okay yeah, more we must help people survive sure I mean I think we have how many how many provisions do we have yeah I think we could have you know handled that many um one thing I did want to do I was trying to build 60 gun frigates but it just oh we have one in storage perfect okay what i was going to do uh to make a true american fleet oh, you guys please go to port was i was going to start selling off some of these ships one because we need money and i've heard that the 60 gun frigates are pretty fun and we can like really start pumping these bad boys out and you can see here we're pumping out we've got tons of virginias tons of united states um yeah so we're we're doing pretty well on this front, if I do say so myself. Uh, 
I was actually doing the United States because we'll start giving all like all of our crappy militia that are around those. Um, I did uh, I did recruit some guys here, so you need to go up over there, and you need to go. Oh boy, which unit was it? Uh, we'll know if the line disappears. Crap, it was the other unit. Oh no, both lines are there. Perfect. Okay, so time for us to consolidate forces. Okay, great, great, great. Um, we do need to get these guys out of there eventually. This will kind of suck for a moment because that's too many men in there. And basically what's going to happen, this is episode 19. Episode 20 is going to be the last episode of the campaign. Um, and there's going to be a long period of nothing. And I'm not going to record that. From like November to April, not going to record that. Hopefully Fort Clinton, New York, and Hempstead, they bleed out and we can have a manageable battle of New York be the very last battle and I would absolutely love that. I need, oh my goodness, I need these ships to go into... Yeah, we're going to disband, disband, and disband. And then we're going to sell those ships, make 60 gun frigates, that is the way we are Mandalorians. Um, fourth rate U.S. heavy, U.S. class heavy frigate. They could uh, work that even worse. And the weird thing is, so the game, I, I found out the game does ratings wrong. Um, this is, they call this a 60 gun frigate. Kind of represents like the USS President in 1817 when it actually turned into a 60 gun frigate. These were considered 44-gun frigates when they were first built, but that's a story for a different day. We got into an argument on Discord about that. I really wish um, the devs would actually call the frigates by their historical name and not the in-game name. Just because you have 60 guns on a ship doesn't mean it's a 60-gun frigate. Um, you only classify certain guns on a ship in their rating, and when the ships were designed, they were designed for 44 of those classified guns. So in hit, hit, when you say, like, U.S. 44-gun frigates, you know what you're talking about. If you say U.S. 60-gun frigate, it's like, uh, 1817 USS President? Question mark? Because that's not a real thing. It's kind of like the HMS Victory. We keep coming across it. Uh, actually, I have one of them. USS America. Um, this should be called a 104-gun ship, not a 112-gun ship, even though it has... 112 guns um they're they they do these guns wrong um there should be like eight carronades on the victory and what i mean by carronades is not the ones that are on these mounts these are the guns that you classify in a rating system but other guns that are like wheeled around or um sort of like swivels and whatnot you don't count them as part of the rating so hms victory is like a 104 gun ship of the line even though it might have more than 104 guns you only count the, the basically the the port, uh, and port and starboard guns that are in actual like gun ports. Uh, th those are really what you consider. But that's a that's a really crappy way of explaining gun ratings. If there's one thing I like, I I am very passionate about. It is uh, like late 1700s, early 1800s naval stuff. I'm really big into that. So it's been bothering me for a while that, like, this is called a 78-gun ship. It's, no, you refer to British third rates as 74-gun ships. And come around the Napoleonic wartime, when you say, like, an 80-gun ship, you're probably referring to the Bucantar or Torrent-class French ships, and it's generally a French ship. Or it might be a Spanish ship, but so the Spanish just love to put as many guns as they could on a ship. I, I think the um, Santissima Trinidad had 144 guns or something stupid at the Battle of Trafalgar, but I am rambling and <laughs> the episode's over. I just wanted to talk about that stuff. So episode 19 is in the books. Episode 20 is going to be the final episode of this campaign, and it's going to be some sort of Battle of New York, Fort Clinton, Hempstead. Um, it will be the final episode of the campaign because 20 is sort of my limit for a sandbox campaign. The views just tank, the the gameplay gets a little boring, 
Um, so I'm going to basically do November through April off, off camera. We're going to build up a giant force around here. We're still going to protect certain areas like Portsmouth and probably put a small force up in Can Canada and then maybe small force um, prepared to help out the frontier. Because I imagine there are game mechanics where like more people than ever existed in the world come to attack and that will be annoying. And then we'll uh, we'll start building 60 gun frigates and have a more American looking fleet than than this uh <laughs> this ragtag British second hand ship fleet, even though, you know, we'll, we'll probably keep these ships for quite some time, but it'll We'll have a bunch of 60 gun ships. So that is it for today's episode. Please like, comment, subscribe. All of that YouTube jazz greatly helps out the channel. If you guys want to check out the American Civil War series that I'm doing, I'm playing as a Confederates. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner. Highly suggest checking that out. I really love that game made by the same people who make this game. And as always, guys, until next time.